have another tutorial for you on the Game Maker Developer Console. This is part two, and today we're going to be taking a look at command handling. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to add the step event. And in the step event, I'm just going to go ahead and see what we're doing, which is command handling. And then to speed things up, uh, right here, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video of me programming through um, sections at a time, and then I'll go ahead and explain it afterwards, give you a chance to copy down that code and listen to the explanation, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so here we just have a few things to go over. The first thing is uh, if enable equals false exit. So if the console is not enabled, then we're just going to go ahead and completely exit this event. So enabling the console, if you press that uh, key to enable the console, it's going to go to this script here, which we are going to create in just a second. And here we have just a little bit of core programming for backspacing. So if you press the backspace key, and if there's actually something in uh, the text field to backspace to get rid of, then we're just going to go ahead and set the current line to equal the current line minus a character. And this is just a timer, the erase. So that's a timer for how fast it'll erase. So the smaller this number is here, uh, the faster it'll erase. So let's go ahead and create that console enable script. Okay, so here we just say that if the console doesn't exist, then we're going to exit this script. But if it does exist, then with the console, we're going to set the enable command to be the opposite. So now we can go ahead back into our command handling in the step event. And we're going to set up the command parsing next. And I'll go ahead and type out this whole section. This is quite a long part. So just stay with me here. I'll explain it as soon as I am finished. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and go over this command parsing now. So here we just have a few temporary variables set up. We have the command, which you're going to be inputting, an argument array, and then the argument count. So here when we press enter, and there's actually something typed in, so the, the string length is greater than 3, uh, we're just going to add a final space at the end. So we're going to say text current line add space, and uh, temporary variable word. That's just going to be the parsing variable that we're going to be using to kind of throw around um, the command we're actually going to be executing. So here we just say uh, that if uh, the word, well, here we, we start parsing after the, the text def. So after those first three characters is when we're going to start um, actually reading the command. So here we just say next character. This is a temporary variable, ncar, and we just say that that is text current line i, so that is going to be the current place we are in the string, and then plus one more. And then we're going to say if the next character is not a space, then we just say word add, add that next character onto the word. But if there is a space, that means that it's you're either inputting a command or you're adding an argument to um, the, the command you're executing. So here we just say if, if the command 
equals nothing, then it's going to go ahead and it's just going to continue executing that command. But if it doesn't exist, that command, then it's just going to say that it's an unknown command because it doesn't the script doesn't exist. But if we have some arguments in that line, we're going to go ahead and put them into an array. So we're just going to say that the first argument in argument count, which is zero, equals word. So it's going to be the word that comes out from ncar. And then we're going to increment argument count, and then we're going to set word back to nothing. And then down here, so this is outside of the for loop of the, the parsing for loop, we execute that command. So we just say if that script exists, the command, then we're going to log it to the to the the console, and then we're going to go ahead and execute that script. Now in GameMaker Studio 2.3, you have to use script execute ext because that's the only way you'll be able to input an array for the arguments. Because if you just use script execute, it expects specific arguments. So if you have commands where you need four or five different arguments, you won't be able to do that with just script execute. You'll only be able to have one argument. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to a few outliers, which um, these are just certain conflict keys that are going to prevent the console from working the way it should. So whenever you press enter, um, right now this parser is going to think that you're just you're adding the enter key onto the command line, which is not what you're doing. You want the enter key to act as a function key. So we have to set a few conflict keys down here. And I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this again and explain it at the end. Okay, so here we just say that if the the last key that was pressed on the keyboard isn't nothing, then it's going to say to switch the last key so that if it's any of these keys, it's not going to um, add those as a character. So you can put a case down for, you literally just list it in here. So like say I, I didn't want, I didn't want the up arrow to affect the console. I just say VK up and then put the, that and bam it'll, it's going to work. So you can add any key by doing it that way. And we just have left shift, right shift, enter the enable key and the backspace key. And then in the backspace case event we have that delete the last key and the last character from the input. And that just exits and it breaks. And then down here we just go ahead and we add text current line. We're going to add the, the keyboard's last character that we pressed. And then the last key we just set to negative 1 so that it resets every time. And that should be about it for the command handling. So in the next video, we are going to go ahead and get into styling and creating your own commands. And that should be the last part in the series. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.